Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the F6F 5N. And as you could see in the pre sequence, this plane actually has one big difference to its kind of predecessor, the F6F 5. And that is more firepower. In which shape? Well, two of the 650 cals get replaced by two 20mm cannons. And overall, you will have a firepower consisting of. 450 cals with 1600 rounds and two cannons with 462 rounds and there you can see my layout universal for the 50 cals and stealth for the 20s stealth because they just simply have the best kind of high explosive ratio filling and then the 50 cals you know universal just simply has the highest ratio of api t no it's api and just one tracer and one armor piercing bullet if I remember correctly. So now let's have a quick look at this engagement with this Yak-9T. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking but I also have help from a P-47N and I'm not quite sure what this Yak-9T was thinking there. Now he's running away. That's obviously a smart move. He is so much faster than me. That brings me to the first topic. This plane has a very, very low climb rate for a fighter it's really not great you have to side climb i have heard that before yeah yeah yeah, yeah. stay with me the problem is side climbing puts you at a higher altitude where you then engage your enemy as if you would directly climb into uh, the engagement zone the problem is uh, you actually are out of the combat zone for a long time for a few minutes so the rest of your team is actually outnumbered. Is that your fault? Yes and no. Because the plane really needs the side climbing to get at a decent altitude. When it is at altitude, the performance is not great. It, it, it struggles, especially at four or five thousand meters. It begins really to, to struggle with the speed and climb rate in particular. It's not great in the first place, but it really gets slower. And by the way, two further, two more things um, that I ha have to quickly add. I'm sorry about the hastiness of the commentary, but I'm really excited about this battle. First of all, you have to play around with Mech. Mech is manual engine control, and it keeps the engine cool while climbing. And that is very important, but you have to be uh, careful because you have to actually uh, pay close attention to the supercharger gears because you actually not just have two but three of them and now watch this shot i set him on fire fire spreads and i finish him off with the 20s great result i love that the first three bursts were not that successfully and obviously i hit him with the 50 cals i hit i i pulled the trigger on both weapon types 20s and 50s or 20 millimeters and 50 cals but when you just hit um, with a few sparks that is it's mostly the 50s because they have a higher muscle velocity than the 20 millimeters but the 20 millimeters are so much better in terms of muscle velocity than for example the German uh, MG 151-20 which is a bad weapon in comparison the ammunition is better the weapon is worse and that brings us to the next topic, kind of. Um, that is the comparison to the Focke Wolf 190 A5U2. But before I do that, one quick word. I put off the web. You have overall 10 minutes of webbing. After that, it grays out and you have no further um, powering trees. That is important. Keep that in mind. You then have to uh, fly back to base to reset the internal timer. But then you have to spend like five minutes of climbing, which I actually recommend to use the web for five minutes like that. Um, that's a rough rule. But back to the comparison, because now we have a few minutes. This plane has the same battle rating as the Focke Wolf 190 A5U2, the new one, so to speak that just has two 20mm cannons. It's not such a big difference in terms of firepower, although it's really there, not just in effectiveness, but also endurance and heaviness, so to speak. It is also how the plane performs. I thought the climb rate of the Focke Wolf is not the best, but 
the one of this one is really bad. The firepower is so much better. The high speed handling of both is kind of equal. Although the instructor punishes the Focke Wolf more than he does the F6, F5N. So, you know, the wobbling around and throwing off the target of your aim, you know, by just hitting the rudder or something like this uh, is not given that much. That's my personal opinion. If you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the instructor is my personal enemy within War Thunder. It's not the Russians, it's not the British, it's not the any kind of plane. It's the instructor that interferes hard with the plane's controls, especially at either low or high speeds. And speaking of low speed handling, the F6F is very bad in horizontal turns when it's low speed. When it is high speed, it's decent, but it loses a lot of speed. So energy retention in terms of maneuvers is not that great. But we can see where it shines with the engagement of the LA-5N right now. Pay close attention. He tries to zoom climb me and I zoom up, killing a bit of his energy and then roll over and dive. And did you see how smooth the handling is? And look how smooth I can actually aim. I, I couldn't do this in a Focke Wolf. I might pull it off, but it might be wanky and, you know, just throwing off and wobbling around and ugh, bad, bad. I, I hate the instructor on German planes. It's, it's such a bad implementation. I, I'm not sure what's wrong with German planes. Is it the flight model? Is it really the instructor being deliberately uh, put in there to decrease the overall battle effectiveness of German planes? You know, we had one day in enduring confrontations where it seems like the instructor was put off and the Germans just seal clubbed the British hard and it was a joy to fly the next day. It was worse than ever. But back to the game flying off in kind of a head-on to the P8, structural damage with the 20 millimeters and setting fire with the 50 cals. And I avoid the 20 millimeter defensive fire of the P8 and he goes down. And there it is. That's my third kill. And still I have a lot of ammunition, over a thousand rounds for the 50 cals and over 250 rounds for the cannon. That's basically, I'm, I'm above half my ammunition count and I have three kills do you see the difference do you see it I'm you know it might be not come as a big surprise but I like good results I'm a, kind of a competitive player in terms of realistic battles and also arcade and I just love to get results for my efforts and that brings me to whether plane really stands out. I think it has a battle rating of 1.0 higher than the normal F6, F5, but I think it's justified by the pure fact that it can put down its enemies and you can go into head-ons as a last result and you will do the damage. And the combination of 50 cals and 20 millimeters is just awesome. Uh, this is also why I actually love the firepower on P-38s, for example. 120 millimeter and 450 cals is a good combination. You get the best out of both worlds without the drawbacks, in my opinion. Maybe the weight, but you know. So flying and killing the P-2 like that is easy mode. And I actually rip off his wingtip, if I'm correct. And down he goes. Nice result right there. That's my fourth kill. Like that. And you know, it, it is kind of an amplification by amplification by amplification. What do I mean by that? Well, let, let's, let's just think about a normal F6F. You can't go into head-ons. Nobody fears you that much. You have low climb rate, not the best but also not the worst maneuverability and so on. But with this plane, 
you actually put the effort into getting on the tail or on the six of your enemy or above him, boom and zoom them, and you get the kill, you know, and there is no critical damage and no spitfire that comes in and swoops your, um, you know, swoops the enemy and denies you the kill. Kill stealing or not doesn't matter. You don't get the kill for your effort. And that's frustrating. And the next match is the same. And so on and so on. And then, you know, stuff like this happens. Great shout out to this Yak9K pilot, by the way. He did an awesome job. He first encountered a Spitfire. Then he encountered a Spitfire and a P63. Then a Spitfire, a P63 and a P47. Before he actually put down the P63 and got killed by me by trying to avoid the P47 in kind of a stall maneuver. He was awesome. I have to give it to him. You know, he actually didn't deserve to die. He, he was an awesome pilot. Like, when I killed the P8, he was visible in, in dogfighting with both the Spitfire and beginning also engaging the P63. And he put the P63 down while dogfighting with the Spitfire. It's not just a testament how good the Yak-9K is at you know, dogfighting at low altitude. Of course, it's a Russian plane and it's a Yak. But the pilot also had the situational awareness to avoid the attacks of both. And just, it's kind of a shame that I had to put him down. But, you know, I got the kill. That's my ace. And at this moment, I have to, I have to add that this battle is an exception. Okay? Not every battle... Not every battle that I played was like this. I had a few battles that where I had four kills, right? I had a few battles where I just lost because of points, enemy bombers, you know, killing ground targets. And here I actually waste a blind hunt to find the last enemy plane. I knew that it was some sort of big bomber, probably a P8 as you can see now. And now I engage him. I already have my ace, but I'm also the nearest this P8 and uh, you know P8s are tricky targets they have 20 millimeter defensive gunners you have to fly carefully to engage him at the moment I'm flying directly towards him to close the distance but I'm also relatively quick um, and I stay above him and I wait on on you know on his for his turn what's what's he doing and now I think it's time to engage him I'm kind of in an awkward angle for him to shoot at me. And watch him, watch him. He actually rolls to give me the lowest profile to shoot at. That's some awesome thinking. Sadly, it didn't work out. But the thing, the thought behind it was awesome. But I have so much firepower that it did not really matter. And I... You know put enough shots into him and that's the game and they're congratulating me for my six kills and, and you know I was really enjoying myself right here I, I just thought this was a great bell this is going on YouTube and great shout out to the team if you look carefully the match again you will see that some planes actually took down their aggressors that they actually then engaged others and helped each other out and at the end of the day we actually won six kills three critical hits 125,000 silver lines and just short of 6,000 modification research points and with a 15 percent research point booster and premium and you know this was the performance up until this point i just now unlocked the engine and i'm going for the research on the 20 millimeter cannons and um trying to begin the research on the engine injection as well that's an awesome battle that's a good result and if you're not trying if you don't give it a try after all those frustrating battles where you got shot down nice first one where you just couldn't kill anything and so on you might just have battles like this where the plane performs really well you get the kills the team works together and you win at the end of the day with a good attitude amongst the uh, team members and great shout uh, big shout out to all of the 
blue players here on the team and also the Yak 9 k pilot. That was an awesome battle. I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys who are watching this video right now did as well. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this battle. Give this video a like if you did and it would help out the, the channel greatly and it's not that difficult to hit the like button, is it? Subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies of War Thunder.